Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and today we're in Maine, close to Bar Harbor, and with the Maine Granite Museum. And Stephen Haynes is going to give us some demonstrations on granite, how they split it, how they worked it, and the machines they used and the hand tools they used. So here we go. Okay, um, uh, my name's Stephen Haynes. Uh, I'm the founder. At 11 years old, I was. Uh, uh, learning all of these traditional uh, mechanics of the arts uh, procedures. So we'll be going around, we'll do a little bit of quarrying uh, and uh, hand hewing of the stone and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, polishing process. The historic uh, drilling of uh, these uh, slabs one man would now sit on, it, sit on his toolbox. He now puts his uh, fingers all in protection. And he's got socks with the toes cut out, bunched up on his wrist. He's now protected and now holding the rock drill in his hands like this. Three men are striking with eight pound hammers. Strike. It bounces. He turns in the air. Strike. Bounce. One of the men miss. It pushes his hand off. If he held it like this, no protection could help him. He would crush his um, um, wrist. So holding it like this, he's blinking each time. Hot shrapnel is coming off the drill top. So strike. Bounce. Turn. Now we're pulling that uh, steel out and now taking the stone dust out with the dust spoon. This is now emptying those holes of stone dust and chips. Now we're putting this tool here, the foot wedge. This is a uh, half rounds with a taper in the middle. Now dropping into that hole and now we're striking that uh, wedge and now putting a strain on grain. Every eight feet we have those uh, uh, foot wedges. Now we're drilling a smaller series of holes putting different size um, foot wedge in. This is the photograph of that procedure. The sheet is there and all those uh, hot, uh, foot wedges are put in, struck, and tension is put on grain. Two vacant holes and two-thirds. Now we're putting a coarse grain DuPont black cannon powder. It was called Little Giant Powder, a big leaf powder. Now we put a fuse, a wad, paper, a cloth, packing with sand and clay. Ignite the fuse. Steam whistle blow three times. Men took cover. And now the explosion. This piece of stone would now split. And now it pushes it uh, out in uh, the quarry. Now we have this block free. And we can walk around it and we can start breaking it down in the hard way. Strike, turn, and now taking out the stone dust with the, uh, the spoons. Putting uh, the smaller version of half round and wedge, and now uh, breaking that uh, block. Now we have to take that block, which is free, two free sides, and now we're building with the uh, point, uh, the uh, dog hole. That dog hole is made by hand, and now the dog is put in. The other uh, dog, and now lifting the stone and transporting. Okay, this um, um, uh, demonstration is uh, taking the stone out of wine. Uh, it's called um, winding blocks, uh, which are steel. Uh, each one is a uh, certain size, so we have uh, four that is um, um, in perfect uh, uh, height. Now the stone comes in from the quarry and it's uh, now uh, flat 
uh, but it is uh, very uh, unlevel. It is humped up. We always take the worst side first. Now uh, we put the uh, stone up on a table called a banker. Now this man can sight his stone. And uh, he's now taking, uh, kneeling down and he's looking at his stone and he's picking low corner. Low corner, he now takes his uh, hammer, his chisel, and he now um, takes and levels low corner. He's now making sure it's a nice flat surface and now taking and putting one. He plums it this way and this way to make it proud, to stand up straight. He now uh, takes his uh, second corner, putting a flat surface in, and now putting one. He plums it this way and this way. Now uh, the uh, third, his fourth corner, now he puts his straight edges on. He's now uh, um, scooching down, and now with his eyesight, he will uh, go and shoot his eyesight across those uh, platforms. And uh, when he's got all four corners plumbed in, he's got a uh, flat surface. The Acadia Bridges, one man, one stone, one day. If he didn't come up to that, coming up to snuff, there would be 50 people behind him to take his job uh, during the Depression. Now this man would take and do his center. He would do his center cut, and now he's got five platforms uh, in the uh, stone. Center and all four edges. Now he builds his heiress line, connecting uh, the platforms uh, with the uh, straight border. This man now takes his point, his three-pound hammer, and now it's striking, taking all of the high points off, and now he has his first flat surface. This surface is perfect for mortar. The deep pits, the mortar goes down into the stone. Sister stone goes up on, a uh, perfect uh, mortar joint. Now we can uh, measure down with the loofing, the, the uh, wooden rule, get bottom bed. We can now take uh, the big square and now we can uh, do joint. The fifth side is called build projection. This is what we would see from the outside of the uh, rock. Now uh, build projection is now taken and we have a uh, straight border inside of build surface. Now we uh, make that line. Now we take this uh, flat uh, handset, the flat bladed. It's not pointed, but it is tempered. And now on that uh, line, we're now taking and striking that flat surface on that uh, line across the uh, stone. Eventually that will break off and now we have a scalloping effect uh, and rough stone projecting off a straight border. Okay, uh, so uh, we have in the city build uh, build surface. This is the outside and you can see a line texture. And so uh, each stone would be the same texture and the same color. So uh, now uh, this stone is now hammered with the rock axe called the peen. This is flattening uh, the uh, surface uh, with uh, one cut. Then we'll take uh, the uh, four-bladed 
hammer, striking the granite block, crushing the crystals, and compacting them. And now we're striking the uh, granite and uh, compacting, uh, building that line texture. The polishing process. Uh, the uh, granite to be polished uh, is now hammered uh, with the foreblade. Crushing the crystals, compacting the crystals. And so, uh, striking. Now the man is taking the six blade, eight blade, uh, ten blade, and the last blade system of 14 blades. That 14 bladed hammer is now striking the uh, granite, compacting them, and now we have a very smooth surface. So this is a 14 fine blade. Now we bring in from Greece. This is uh, on the scale, the Mohs index scale, is uh, number 10 is diamond. The granite is number 7, quartz and hardness. This material from Greece. This is 2,000 year old quarry of emery or carborundum. This is a number 9 in hardness. So this man now, uh, with his uh, stone to be polished, is in the rubbing sheds. This was not called polishing sheds. It was the rubbing that this man now rubs that emery or carborundum on the stone, taking all that line texture. We hammered the granite, compacting the crystals, and now we can achieve polish. So now we use this stone, 30 grit, going one direction. We now do 60 grit, 80 grit, 100, 220, 400, 600. Now we put an oxide of tin, a white powder. We mix it with water, putting on that surface and let it harden. Now we take a felt buff. Now that felt buff is taken across the stone, heating the surface up, and now putting uh, that uh, delicious uh, luster on, uh, which is called polish. But it's a hand rubbed um, uh, surface. Okay, this is uh, my blacksmithing shop. Uh, this is uh, a five year apprentice for a young boy. Uh, this tooling is 1885 um, and uh, all the uh, uh, drill press was uh, uh, 1910. I have all the uh, historic catalogs. Uh, all of uh, those catalogs are uh, uh, pictures of this uh, tooling. I have uh, four uh, foundries uh, eight um, uh, small um, um, forges. Okay, uh, this is uh, mechanized machinery that came in in 1890. This is an air compressor that has been being run by the steam boiler. Now uh, rotating that compressor, putting compressed air. This is a reciprocating piston with a blade system. And so this man would be uh, now on a trolley system, uh, this pounding the granite and uh, putting a line texture. World War I comes in and now uh, Maine has been stripped of all of its steel uh, and uh, for the war effort. So after World War I, there was no industry in Maine. All the machinery was uh, uh, melted down for the war effort. This machine put 20 men out of work with hammers. Okay, uh, this is, uh, I've been uh, chosen by uh, uh, the local uh, town 
uh, this is my fifth project of uh, the Civil War Monument. Uh, this one is George Heath, of uh, died in 1862 uh, in South Carolina. Uh, the marble does not uh, hold up in Maine weather, and so this monument was now cracking. Um, it was tried to be repaired uh, with concrete, and uh, now uh, fallen down. Uh, all the pins of, uh, of uh, brass uh, was uh, now uh, rotted out and um, now uh, the uh, stone is uh, very uh, rotten and so I've got to rebuild this whole corner and uh, try to put my lettering in. So we had a contract here on the coast of Maine for the uh, bases for all the uh, Civil War monuments. This collection here, um, it was uh, about, about 90. I had an Italian family that I met. And uh, so he had a monument shop in uh, Bangor, Maine, Fletcher and Butterfield. And so uh, it was all run down. The buildings were uh, now um, um, caved in. And uh, so I met him and uh, we uh, hugged, he had tears, and he said, somebody has done it, collected the history, and I'm going to give you all my uh, historic um, uh, pneumatic with uh, all the uh, tooling, uh, the uh, uh, templates, and uh, all of the, um, uh, the um, setup um, letters. And so uh, these, uh, every nationality uh, would have uh, been in this uh, font case. And um, um, then the uh, stone cutter would pick the stone. The family would pick the stone, take it to a, uh, a stone cutter, and he would put the uh, letters in. At first, it was all hand tools. Uh, that uh, putting those letters and then um, uh, 1890s sandblasting is uh, now being used and uh, today it's a uh, laser and so we just had a discussion about laser uh, with a monument uh, fellow from uh, uh, Pennsylvania and he did uh, agree that laser was not going to last as long as the hand cut letters uh, in uh, the uh, granite monuments. But these are all the modern tools? Uh, this is uh, 1890s uh, and we have uh, these uh, tools with a reciprocating piston pushing air in. Now we take the chisel um, now putting it in and uh, now we can uh, not hammer it, but the tool itself is now um, um, uh, working the stone. Uh, granite uh, at the uh, quarry uh, comes out in large blocks. Then we uh, drill it, split it into uh, six by sixes. And uh, so the uh, block now is transported down to the cutting area. Uh, this man now, uh, using his uh, um, uh, chisel, this is a very old one that is uh, tempered, and it gives the perfect strike. And so uh, we would use that uh, tempered um, chisel, and we're marking the stone. on all three sides here. This is telling the granite the hard way where we want it to split. So this is across the grain, right? Across the uh, grain in rift. The two easy ways that the uh, granite splits. After that's done, 
uh, the man would now rotate his stone, take the uh, big hammer, Wow! and now the block has been split. Uh, now that block is now taken to the banker. Banker. This table here is uh, um, uh, good uh, square edges so that we can use this table with the square and get true lines. Um, we seat the uh, stone into that sand mix and now taking putting our lines on and now going across the uh, grain this is now done not on three sides but two sides uh, three sides not on four sides three sides excuse me Telling the stone where we want it to uh, split. Now there's a saying, and if uh, worried and nothing seems to help, I go look at a granite cutter hammering on his granite block a hundred times without a crack. But that 101st blow, the uh, rock, uh, granite rock splits. I know it was not that blow that did it but all the blows that have gone before. And so uh, you never give up. Your granite block will eventually uh, be uh, splitting. Each time rotating, see I um, now pack it in. This was a specialized uh, uh, job. Uh, the uh, Swedes and uh, Finns uh, were uh, paving block people. We could not teach, they could not teach the native men to cut paving. Now we have that one foot block. And um, now we can uh, take it, uh, pile it on our paving block pile, and um, keep adding. 1,000 block was worth $23. In the city, it was $90 a thousand for a contractor. So that man would work cutting one day 165 blocks a day and uh, piling up that 1000 and receiving $23. Well, I want to thank Stephen Haynes for giving me the opportunity to film him doing all these demonstrations. There's another sister video to this. It's called Derek and Crane's Main Granite Museum. And if you ever see the old pictures of the cranes on the old buildings, he gives us a demonstration on a crane that he restored at the museum. And I also have another video out, it's called Stone Steps Repair, Granite Church Steps, where they replaced a whole set of granite church steps. And another video that would be similar that might help is carving stones with ancient technology. And I do how they did it hand-wise. So thanks for watching, I'm Mike Haddock, I'll see you next video.